welcome back to my channel! Today I will be reviewing The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. I have read his other book, Outwitting the Devil. I talked about that in my January reading wrap up video, so if you haven't seen that, go watch that. It's just interesting to me what we remember and why. I had one professor say, I think therefore I am, and I thought, okay, here's this old professor just saying whatever sing songy sayings that he's gonna say. <laughs> I didn't really think about what it meant. Now, years later, I think about that all the time. It is so meaningful and actually it's a great way to start off this video because a lot of what's in this book stems down from that phrase. This book it's basically your step-by-step -step how to manifest. My version was like over 700 pages. He goes into a lot of detail about his personal life, colleagues of his, successful people, not successful people. This was written in 1925. There are elements of this book that come across as a little sexist however he is also at the same time ahead of his time. In the introduction of the book he has this table. So there's 15 laws of success. Stop doing air quotes. It's 0 to 100 ranking each of the 15 laws of success. So you can see where all of these men have ranked on the success scale and you're supposed to go and rank yourself before and then after you apply the laws from the book you're supposed to rank yourself again and see where you stand then. Some of these pillars, I'm gonna call them pillars. Pillars. <laughs> it sounds like I'm saying pillows but with an accent. Some of these I agree with, some of these I don't necessarily agree with. It's all about what you take away from it. I'm so happy to be reviewing this for you because it had an impact on me, faux show, sure, and I think it can be helpful to you. I took so many notes. Let's see if I can say this in a cohesive way. The first- stop it! Put them away! The first pillar is a definite chief aim. This is basically deciding what you want your goal to be. He says you should write a statement of your aim, say it to yourself every day. He talks about how important it is to form an alliance with people. It is so important who you surround yourself with. And the difficult thing is you may have family members or friends who truly do care about you, but if they have limiting beliefs and they're projecting those onto you, that can be really harmful to you if you don't have the strength to separate that from yourself. The second pillar is self-confidence. I demand of myself persistent, aggressive, continuous action. You have to be so driven and it has to come from the deepest desires of your heart. Otherwise, first of all, what is the point in trying to get this thing? Second of all, you're not gonna have that drive. When I'm by myself and I'm just pedal to the metal, grinding out my editing, nothing could stop me, I am on fire. So really make sure whatever your definite purpose is, it is something that you are wholly passionate about. I will induce others to serve me because I will first serve them. That's where I got the whole, I need to come up with something that's gonna serve the audience. He's saying, spend 30 minutes a day thinking about the person that you wish to be, what qualities that person has. Think of people whose qualities you admire and whom you would want to take on as your own. Then we go on to the third pillar, the habit of saving. Here's a great quote. Who told you it couldn't be done? And what great achievement has he to his credit that entitles him to use the word impossible so freely? If somebody's limiting you and saying like, mm, I don't believe you can do that, you can't achieve that, what have they done that is so great that would make you want to believe what they have to say? Have they done anything great? No. So why does their opinion matter? We need to like take other people's opinions and like put them through a sieve, a sieve, and just really filter out all the opinions that don't mean anything to us. There's also another quote from another professor of mine in college that I love so much. That would hurt my feelings if I respected your opinion. Whose opinions are you choosing to respect? Think about that. Think about the quality of character that those people have and whether or not you value those. I think that is a really valuable lesson. He has all these pillars, but he puts a lot of random other seeds of wisdom in various different chapters. There is a sort of structure to this, but at the same time, it kind of falls away the deeper you get into the book. Quit the habit of buying on credit. Save a regular proportion of your income. The spending habit must be replaced by saving. So basically, saving your money is a great idea. The fourth pillar is initiative. Initiative? Initiative and leadership. Make sure you are actively putting in work. The big prizes of life cannot be measured in dollars and cents. The reason why money is so great is because it is a tool. It is a tool to help us experience the life that we want to live. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, my feet can just hold this up. Number five. 
Imagination. The man who slanders his fellow man unwittingly uncovers the real nature of his inner self. What you say about others says more about yourself. I mean, we've all been there, right? We've all made mistakes. We all have our flaws. We've all gossiped at one point or another. Does it ever feel really good? No. And also it always comes back around. The man who is afraid to give credit to those who help him is so small, the man is small, that opportunity will pass by without seeing him someday. If you fail to be grateful for people, then things are gonna pass you by. I believe that being grateful for things allows other opportunities for you to be grateful about to come into your life. Here's a personal example. A couple weeks ago, I had this day where my social media just blew up because of a video that I was in that got like 12 million views. I had a lot of people start to follow me, especially on TikTok. They would comment about this video. My first reaction was, ugh, people are commenting about this thing. The first feeling that I had wasn't this feeling of being grateful for the people following me in the first place, which I am. I am so grateful that that happened to blow up so that people started following me, but it really taught me a valuable lesson, which is if I can't be grateful for this little thing now, how can I be grateful for this big thing later? Number six, enthusiasm. Without character, you are nothing. <laughs> You're nothing. Number seven, self-control. Deliberately place thoughts you desire there in your mind and keep out thoughts of others. This is again saying, be careful with the thoughts that you place in your head because they will root themselves in your subconscious eventually if you think them enough and believe them enough. Number eight, habit of doing more than paid for. Make yourself so useful that they cannot get along without you. That is actually something that I do very well. I make myself so useful that every time I have ever worked for anybody ever, I've gone above and beyond. However, it's not ever been my dream job wherever I've worked. Otherwise, I'd still be working there. This is really hurting me to sit up like that. I hope this is still recording. Wait, let me, coffee break. So, I mean, I don't think you need to break your back doing more than you're paid for. I think it applies for me because in working on this channel, if I only do the bare minimum, where's that gonna get me? The ninth pillar, pleasing personality. I love this piece of advice. Find a person each day, find a good quality of theirs and praise it genuinely. Sometimes when somebody praises us, for example, you're checking out at Trader Joe's and someone's like, oh my gosh, I love your necklace. And you're like, oh, thanks. I love your hair. It's not genuine. You're just seeking for something to say because you feel bad because they said something nice about you and you want to say something nice about them. Well, maybe that's just how I feel. When somebody doesn't expect something, especially from a stranger, for some reason, it means so much more that a stranger picked up on something. Once you start looking for good qualities in other people, it's not hard to find them. That will help you look at the good qualities in yourself. Your subconscious mind is so powerful. The way that you speak about things is a direct reflection of the way that you think about them. And it may not necessarily be that you're conscious of those thoughts. Start reflecting on the things that you talk about. Are you constantly complaining and you just didn't know it? Not only can other people have an impact on you, but what are you doing? Are you negatively impacting the people around you? Or are you having a positive impact on them? Just something to think about. Number 10, accurate thought. No one may influence another without the consent of the one influenced. This reminds me of a quote, I think it's from Eleanor Roosevelt. No one can make you feel some type of way without your consent. Basically, that's just saying we have more power than we think we do. Oh, uh, that's not true. This person said this and this hurt my feelings. That's because you gave what they said merit. It's hard because we're fragile. I've heard this kind of thing going around lately. If somebody says to you, your hat looks so stupid and you're not wearing a hat, you don't believe what they say because you are not wearing a hat. If somebody says something to you, but you don't believe it yourself, then it's not going to affect you. I'm working on this now because not everybody leaves nice positive comments. When I was first making YouTube videos like three years ago, oh my God, somebody left a comment about my appearance that just really hurt my feelings. I was really sensitive. I cared about what anyone and everyone thought about me but now when I see some people comments like negative comments it is evident to me that there's some sort of negativity in your life that is causing you to say that from the bottom of my heart I just hope that you are able to get over whatever it is you're you know suffering through if you aren't careful and you let anybody in people can have a really negative impact on you or they can have a really positive impact on you your chief aim will come to your attention in things you read opportunities will come once you are set on something you'll start to see synchronicity lately I've been seeing 10 10 on the clock i'm not sure exactly what that means because every website gives me like a different meaning for me it's just confirmation that i'm like on the right path or good things are coming to have faith that kind of thing the power to think as you wish to think is the only power over which you have absolute control 
That could sum up the whole book right there. I just recorded the whole end of my video and I ran out of iPhone stores. So here I am. Let's just repeat everything I just said for the last half hour. <laughs> the power to think as you wish to the yeah, yeah. Number 11, concentration. The act of focusing the mind on a given desire until it's been worked out. And then he talks a lot about habit. It's like when you're driving your car somewhere that you go all the time, you're on autopilot because you've done it so many times before. You want to develop good habits so that you don't have to think about them. Number 12, cooperation. These are the chapters where I kind of started skimming because he didn't really go into the actual content of the word that the chapter title was. You want to surround yourself with people who are more talented and better at doing a certain skill than you are. For me, I'm like, well, I work by myself on my YouTube videos. I'm not really working with anybody. However, the people that I tell about my YouTube channel and that I talk to about it, people believing in me and getting excited to see my videos, that is just as valuable to me as it would be if I were working in an office and we all need to work together to achieve this common goal. It's the same kind of deal. Number 13, failure. He didn't really say much about failure, just that you will be able to achieve success if you view your failures as temporary defeat. Number 14, tolerance. Too often we hold opinions that are based upon no sounder foundation than that of what someone else believes. This goes along with everything we've been saying. Make sure you take stock of what your opinions are, what you believe, and where those came from. Number 15, the golden rule. We've been taught that, I was taught this in elementary school, do unto others as you would wish them to do unto you. No one can deprive you of the benefit that you will derive from rendering of that service insofar as it adds to your own character. If you do an act of kindness for somebody and you don't see any immediate reward, the reward in itself is that it's building the good qualities of your character. That's why doing things for other people feels so good. So no one can take that away from you is what he's saying. So that is it for Napoleon Hill today. I really sincerely hope you were able to take something out of this. If you want, read the book. Let me know what you think. I'm not sure what my next video will be. It'll be something along the lines of manifestation and self-help. So stay tuned and I'll see you in my next video. That's a wrap.